that right now. Now, in case you don't know it and you're confused, God abhors homosexuality. What? Like he, abhor, he abhors incest. He abhors a, a fornication and adultery and bestiality, sex with animals. Do not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. All that matters is God likes you. He accepts you. He approves of you. Is that true for Every, is that true for homosexuals? Absolutely. I believe that God's breathed his life into every single person. We're all on a journey. Nobody's perfect. You know, you, you know the Bible says that sin is uh, a sin is pride, a sin is selfish ambition. We just want we tend to pick out these Of course, all those things, along with other sins, but those are sex sins that God will not tolerate from anybody at any time in any time in history. Okay, so America is inviting this junk in and people are confused. Am I gay? Am I straight? Am I gay? Am I straight? No. If you're gay, join their crowd and be damned forever. If you're straight, stand up for Christ and fight. Get it straight. Quit having the Joel mentality. Oh, I've got people in my church are nice people. They're nice people. They're there to destroy your church, Mr. Olstein. You were on, you know, it, okay, here. and get a great medical report. After this same-sex marriage was passed, just a short while ago, this writer said, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that 14 tornadoes hit Illinois this past Sunday. Now, he's talking about November the 17th. Now, yesterday was Sunday. We're talking about the Sunday before yesterday when I delivered my first message. 14 tornadoes in Illinois in one day. Is God angry about something? something? Well, let's just see. This is what a 200 mile per hour tornado sounds like, ripping through Washington, Illinois, and right into Chris Lancaster's house. We begin in storms. The Midwest is dealing with widespread destruction this morning after a powerful line of storms. Forecasters say they've received at least 80 reports of tornadoes Sunday. People in Illinois, it is one of the state's deadliest tornado disasters ever for this time of year. Eight deaths, most of them in Illinois, after rough weather that stretched across 12 states in all, and all in the space of one strangely violent day. It was hard to believe, really, a wild outbreak of tornadoes. What the weather forecasting business calls a second season outbreak in a place where they assumed the danger had passed for this year. I'm just quoting a few things. We may be languishing in the toilet under Bush and Rove, whoever, I know who Bush was, and then I'm not sure what he's talking about, Rove, but he said, but ever since Obama took office, here we go, I've been hearing a giant flushing sound and there's nothing to cling to as we're sprawling downward in the toilet. Like a t being flushed. Now that reminds me, if you go back and read some of our very early prophetic books, there is a prophecy in there that God says there is a sucking funnel descending on America. And he used the word sucking funnel, like a tornado funnel and sucking things up into it or sucking things down like a toilet would. And here this person is saying this. Well, that prophecy was given maybe what, do you think, 10, 15 years ago? It's been a long time ago, but here he's, he's using this about going downward. The news doesn't dribble out anymore. Here a little, there a little. It says it's coming 90 miles an hour eastbound down a westbound lane. He's talking about the news of what Obama's up to. Uh, so the Air Force drops, so help me God, from their oaths while Obama drops under God for the dozens of times since he's been in office. He hates the word God. He hates the word Jesus. He hates the Bible. He hates Jesus. He hates you Christians. He hates me. Your president hates me. <laughs> well, I hate him too. Thank you. <laughs> There's no love lost. I don't like you. I'm praying that you will repent, but I'm not looking for it. 
And trust me, sweetie, it's all I can do is pray for that. I should be praying more for our president. Well, I do. I pray that God will get rid of him. Okay, now going on here. It says, the land of Lincoln approves same-sex marriage. And then they talk about that. And then it goes on and says, a day doesn't go by anymore without story after story dealing or detailing corruption, manipulation, extortion, and on the Republican side, uh, they're talking about how the Republicans are surrendering to the Democrats on everything. Bunch of panty waist cowards. Red, white, and blue. Boo hoo hoo. You Republicans haven't got any guts or grit left. You know why? Because you've been gutted out with the demos. None of you guys will stand for anything. I don't believe in Democrats or Republicans, but if you're going to stand for something, usually Democrats stand for the slime like Obama. Republicans stand for God in one sense. In one, one sense. 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 Okay. okay. Democrats, the, he's saying they're like socialists and fascists. And Republicans, aside from Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz is the one who threw a big fit from Texas about this thing that just happened. About the, you know, stop stopping, stopping, stopping. the debt the ceiling, debt, ceiling and all that. that. Well, well, it went well, through. He was, that's who he's talking about. Uh, they became the whipping post. And he says, America, wake up. Your country has just been stolen. Obama and his henchmen are not incompetent. This has been the most well-orchestrated takedown since. Then he talks about other people there. Well-orchestrated takedown. Obama is a wussified, effeminate, and he is well-informed. He knows exactly what he's doing. He is a puppet on a string, and he does everything that his bosses tell him to do. And that's getting rid of Christianity and anything resembling God in this country, and that's what he's working at. Make sure there's plenty of pinkos out there, because he knows pink stink. And he knows it's in the face of God, and that's why he's so bent on homosexuality and all this filthiness. And he knows Muslims hate God. Uh, the God we serve, they serve Allah, we serve God. They hate Christianity and they hate Christians. And he, that's why he caters to them because he's one of them. He, they know if they're let loose, they will destroy all Christianity at a, any given time, anywhere in the world. So, homosexuality, the pinkos, the stinkos, and the Islamics, those two major forces are here. Then we have the big socialist giant called China and says, we're not taking your stuff anymore. You either pay up or we're going to put you out of business. Well, we won't pay up. We have nothing to pay. So more than likely, your dollar won't be nothing by tomorrow. 130 and counting major officers in the military has been purged. We're talking about generals of all ranks and colonels have been purged out of the military because they were pro-America. That's what they're fighting for. He doesn't like that. Get these out of there. We want someone to stand up for Karl Marx, for God's sake. He's our founding father. And Harry Hay, of course. The gay Harry Hay. We don't want to forget him. They've been purged. And then, uh, they say, well, where is all the press about all that? He says, where are the press conferences chronicling Obama's Breaches of the Constitution. He doesn't care about the Constitution. He's not an American. He doesn't give a crap about your Constitution. Flush it down the toilet. He doesn't care about it. That's why he violates it every day. Meanwhile, the Pentagon gleefully, they got it in quotes, purges God, Christ, the Bible, and Christians from the armed services, swapping the policy that once disarmedly discharged perverts. When I was in the army, that we call it Section 8. If anybody was even suspected of being a queer, Section 8 came to your, your attention and you was kicked out of the military. Section 8. That means you was a, a homo or anything like that. Mm -hmm. That stuff sure smells good. Just ask him at the PX for my special brand. I sure wish I could meet a girl that smell like that. <laughs> That's a very manly aroma pile. Now, these, these, these people are praising now Obama. Guess what he wants to do with the tough Marines? He wants them to wear pink coverings. Probably pink hats, girly hats. He, they call them girly hats. He's going to even disgrace the Marines. <laughs> I said, if a while, it'd be 
matter of time that the military will be in pink uniforms. Hey, Bruce! <laughs> Get off my red high heels, hey! <laughs> oh, I just love your pink curls, Jill. No, they don't have butch haircuts anymore, the Marines and shaved heads. Now they got little curls coming down with little pink, you know, fighting hats on. They're pink. Obama is demanding that they wear pink girly hats now for the Marines. You know why he's doing that? Because the Marines are the toughest. He wants to take away their manhood. Okay. Then it says, uh, hmm. They discharge of perverts, they said, in the days I was. And you are still waiting for someone else to speak on your behalf. You better wait a long time. No one's going to speak up for us Christians. We've got to do it ourselves. Okay, finishing up here. Meanwhile, the land of Lincoln. Governor Quinn, Gwynn, G-U-I-N-N, -N, this is the governor of the land of Lincoln, commits double dog blasphemy while signing a same-sex marriage bill that makes Illinois the 16th state in the union to do so. Not only did, did this Catholic Gwynn defile the Holy Bible by reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, but he did so and then signed the bill on a personal desk. That's not all. Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president and Illinois the 16th state to ratify gay marriage. Abraham Lincoln was as queer, and he has some other things, and the guy said, because I read it in the Advocate. The Advocate is a queer paper, so they're saying now Abraham Lincoln was queer, now we've got to make Illinois queer. Hmm. So we'll sign the bill on the first gay president's desk, and then read from the love chapter, in the Apostle Paul's epistle to the Corinthians. Now this was, oh I've got to finish this up. While televising the whole thing for the world to share in our glee. This governor of Illinois had this televised. He was reading the love chapter. Is that chapter 13? The love chapter in Corinthians? About love this and love that. He's saying that Paul wrote that in favor of loving homosexuals and them loving one another. That's what he's doing. But this man, Gwen, you are a man to the core. You forgot to read chapter 6 of 1 Corinthians, which says, 9 and 11, that, don't you know, that the unrighteous would not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived, neither to sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, or men who practice homosexuality nor thieves nor the greedy nor drunkards nor revilers nor swindlers and yes swindler will inherit the kingdom of God and then he says and such were some of you in other words you have been saved you've been washed you've been cleansed now you're a Christian no longer those things but why didn't this guy read that so what he's saying finishing this up here uh, let me find the rest of it He says, if Obama is the velvet glove and the alphabet mafia is an iron fist and all opposition will put through a lavender inquisition. Now those are catch words in a homo movement. Velvet, lavender. That would make the other countries that's been under this blush. Then it says, you will bow to the rainbow statue when you hear the music play or you will not be able to do business, join the military, run for office, or get health care. And then he's talking about the rainbow is the color of the faggots now they use for the rainbow. So if you don't bow, when the, like Nebuchadnezzar, wasn't it made a, a statue unto himself? It says, when you hear the sound of the music, you guys, I want you to bow down and praise me because I am so great. This is what he's saying. If you don't bow down and worship the gay agenda, the rainbow agenda, then you, you're out, dear one. You're out entirely. You can't do any of this stuff. Basically, you're just an outcast here. Righteousness is an exile for Christians and patriots alike. It's time to Daniel up. Put the coffee down. Don't rely on any news outlets that's telling you the next generation of American heroes, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so tells me one thing. When that Gwen signed that on television and saying Abraham Lincoln was queer, 16th president, 16th state, uh, 
14 tornadoes a few days later ripped that stinking place apart. Look it up on, on YouTube and look at some of the damage done. I was surprised how bad that was. They said the whole central Illinois is destroyed. You don't hear this in the news anymore. I wonder if the Samaritan's Curse is going there with their China packs to tell everybody how God loves them after they settle the same-sex marriage. Oh, they'll be there, probably. If, if, if Franklin thought he could get a few dollars, he would sell his billy boy before he's dead out for, you know, for praise and publicity.